Hi, everybody. I'm Sarah Borders with Benefits Compliance Solutions. And back this week is Jen Berman with MZQ Consulting. And we are back this week to talk about the very recent changes to COBRA and the timelines. And um, on Friday, we actually had changes to the model notices themselves. So we thought we'd just have a conversation today about these changes and go over some things with you guys to give you some things to think about. So welcome back, Jen. Great to have you. Thanks for your expertise and insight today. Oh, and thanks, Sarah. I'm uh, so happy to, to be here again um, to talk about this week's new guidance, which I have to admit surprised me. Like, I don't think anybody was expecting this. I know, absolutely came out of left field. I know that the administration probably thought this would be helpful, but I don't know. This is pretty, this makes things a little harder in my opinion. I don't know what you think, but there's a lot I, of uncertainty. Yeah, I think so. So let me take a second and I'll explain what the emergency regulation did. So it is an emergency final regulation. Um, and it takes this concept of, it creates this concept of an outbreak period. Uh, which is the period of time that started March 1st and will end 60 days after the national emergency ends. A national emergency for this purpose is actually, there's a few different definitions floating around, but this is the one that's declared by the president. So it goes until 60 days after. So um, in the regulation itself, it talks a little bit about April 30th, but the national emergency is not over um, today on May 3rd, and I suspect it'll go for quite a while. And what it does, it's interesting, is it essentially tolls or stops all of the, the COBRA clocks from ticking. So COBRA is a very procedural rule and it has a lot of timelines built into it. So you've got 60 days to elect whether or not you wanna go into COBRA and you've got however much time to pay your premiums afterwards. This stops that clock. Um, and that means people essentially are going to have, I mean, I'm not going to say indefinite, but an undefined period of time to make their COBRA elections, think adverse selection, but also um, that same sort of undefined period of time to stay on COBRA uh, without necessarily paying their premiums. Now, of course, afterwards, um, they'll lose that coverage retroactively if the premiums aren't paid, but think about it, months and months and months, potentially, of COBRA premium could accrue um, without being paid while coverage is turned on. Right. So it, in fact, it gives almost at this point unlimited time to elect COBRA, to pay COBRA, and um, to pay premiums once you kind of get going with COBRA too. So, um, and it also delays the notification of the qualifying events as well, like when you're already on COBRA. So that adds another layer of complexity and employers may have a difficult time um, complying with this rule, especially if you're doing it on your own. Um, and I think this is a great time to really engage with a really knowledgeable, trustworthy COBRA vendor out there. So it's just uh, a lot of unknowns, but um, it's important that we talk about it now. So as far as um, this, these changes, that happened. And then two days later, what happened with the model notices? Well, they just put out new model notices. Um, the new model notices are, are great. They actually address the Medicare problem with COBRA, right? So right. that part where if you let COBRA instead of Medicare, um, COBRA is not qualifying coverage for Medicare and it can create all sorts of problems. Um, something we're all aware of. I know Sarah, you and I have both done a lot of work with NAHU on that particular problem. Right. But um, they, they at least put out model notices that describe this, uh, which was great, only they came out after they put out this, this new emergency regulation and they don't mention any of that timing. Um, so it's gonna be kind of, you know, I'm sure many of those COBRA vendors and many of those employers out there are wondering, you know, what are we supposed to do with our notices? It's interesting, even the requirement to send out notices, the employer requirement has been postponed by this new final regulation. But if you don't send out the notice, how can you administer COBRA? So there's a lot more questions than answers here, and it's something we'll be continuing to follow very closely over the coming weeks. 
Yeah, absolutely. Much more to come. And just a quick note here that these, this rule that came out with these extensions and timelines also impacted HIPAA special enrollment rights, impacted claims procedures and, and the timing on those. Also external and internal review um, procedures within the plan, exchange special enrollment periods also, and um, some of the Form 5500 filing deadlines, not for everybody at this point, but just for a certain frame, um, and M M1 filings for me was. So it affected a lot of the normal timelines that we talk about within the health and welfare plan. So much more to come. This is so interesting, such an interesting time right now. And crazy time. It's a crazy, crazy time. Absolutely. And we will keep you posted as these things unfold. Um, watch for more videos. We're going to do a series of videos, uh, Jen and I, and we will have Jessica Waltman join us as well and have these ladies' expertise. So anything you want to add for the folks this week? Um, no, but if you need to listen to this whole video again to convince yourself it's true, um, I wouldn't be surprised. I had to read, here's the new reg, I had to read it, I think, five or ten times before I believed it. The good news is, at least it's short. Right. <laughs> you well, <All> right. <laughs> Great. Well, thanks again, Jen, and we'll see everybody next week. Let us know if you have any questions. Have a wonderful and safe week. Thank <laughs> you.